thing. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a very special part two Alice Cooper paranormal review. Kelly Tool at K E L L Y T H U L on Twitter. And I'm Mike at Official Pagan on everything, even Snapchat. And I probably didn't mention this is Squat Cobbler, but it's the very special Squat Cobbler. So Very, very special. Yes. Super special. We have eschewed numbering these because we wanted to get this content out quickly. And we've got kind of a flow for our other stuff along with nurture and support. So uh, we're letting those roll along on their regular Friday delivery schedule. But we're going to kind of record these and get these out as quick as we can because this album has just come out. And we're super excited about it. And we have, uh, hopefully you're now joining us for part two and have had a chance to listen to part one where we went through the core album of Paranormal, the Alice Cooper solo album with heavy presence from the original Alice Cooper group in either songwriting or performance in one song's case. And uh, Mike and I were huge, huge fans. And uh, now we're going to move to disc two. Disc two is a bonus disc, and it consists of two songs. One song written by Neil Smith, and the other song written by, I believe, Dennis Dunaway? Uh, let me look here. Yeah, Smith, Dunaway, and of course, Alice and Ezra and I have yeah. writing credits on both. Yeah, always Alice, yes. And so we'll have two songs from the uh, the writing credits going to members of the original Alice Cooper group, including Alice. And Bob Evans is, again, a heavy influence throughout this whole thing. And then that is followed by a collection of a live performance, which... Going into this, I was under the impression that the live tracks were going to be the original Alice Cooper group. Yeah, the played. initial press release that went out said that the bonus disc was all Alice Cooper group. But so it, that the live tracks were all Alice Cooper group. And that seemed to be backed up when the Paranormal single came out. Because the B-side on the single was a live track from the Alice Cooper group from one of their recent reunion shows. But as it turns out, it's his current touring band that we get from Columbus, Ohio, and a series of songs from uh, from there. So we get some more some more live tracks from, from Alice. Now, Mike and I are going to, once we get through all the Alice Cooper albums formal, uh, we're going to do uh, at least one bonus show where we talk about the live, the various live albums that Alice has. Uh, and if you've been listening at all, you know there's at least one that's pretty near and dear to both Mike and my hearts in terms of a live album by Alice. But we'll talk about all the live ones together. This is tricky because it's a bonus disc and it's this combination of some studio stuff and some live stuff. So we're just going to kind of talk about this one now as a, as a disc, the bonus disc. And then... Um, we may make some reference to it when we talk about the live stuff later. And like Kelly said, with live albums and stuff like that, we're counting this almost not just to split the song, not just to split it because of length. We're splitting into two discs because in the initial press releases, this was basically pitched as a bonus album packaged with Paranormal. So it also does thematically separate it from that. And we deferred our Pat Boone identification to, to allow this set of songs to be in contention. Although I think Mike's already kind of locked into maybe something off of our first discussion, but we'll see how it how it goes. So this one will likely run a little shorter than our previous show. I don't know, maybe not, but but we still want to get through because there's some... Still likely to run longer than the actual disc does. No doubt. So let's get right to it. So after you've enjoyed the awesomeness that is Paranormal, you get to the bonus disc, and it opens up with these two songs involving the original Alice Cooper group, with the first song being Genuine American Girl. This was originally, my understanding, Neil Smith. And, you know, Neil's kind of, he's a tricky guy because he doesn't have a lot of writing credits throughout the Alice Cooper group history, but the stuff he's done has all been kind of cool. Very different. Alma Mater, uh, off of School's Out, was a Neil Smith number. And I'm trying to remember off Love It to Death, which was his song. He doesn't do a lot, but what he does is good stuff. And of course, he's written a lot of times the whole group's credited and he's had influence. But this is this was a Neil song uh, that, along with Alice and, and others, that uh, got written and was originally planned to be a song about a genuine American girl referring to some girl who was a genuine American girl. Allegedly, as Alice received this song, liked the song quite a bit, but said, how about we make this about me? <laughs> and so so it's kind of sung more from Alice's position that he's a genuine American girl. You had mentioned you had a, a lot to say about it. I've got a little bit to say about it, but let's let, let's let you uh, turn loose on this first, Mike. What are your thoughts on genuine American girl? All right, so there, there was a lot going into the second disc for me. In fact, when I initially got the the digital copy of the album, uh, I started listening to it Friday morning, the day it was released, on my on the train on my way into work. And I actually started with these two tracks because I was so excited. I didn't know that there was a reunion track on the core album yet. So I was just so excited for these two tracks because 
as huge of an Alice fan in general as we both are, I think I can speak for the both of us that we think some of the strongest material was the original Alice Cooper group. As reflected in our rankings, that is true. Yes, and I loved the reunion tracks that were included on the Welcome to My Nightmare, the sequel. And they've been doing some more stuff together, and there's even going to be like a mini tour in the UK and stuff like that. So I'm really excited by all this Alice Cooper group stuff. You know, I started with this too, because going into this, this is what I was even more excited about than the core album itself. When the song started, I was a little bit thrown because I, at first I wasn't sure... Were they talking about an actual girl or is it Alice talking about himself, which became really clear quickly into the song he's talking about himself, which is a great, I'm going to say classic Alice spin on a song that has seemingly on the surface a very traditional theme. He puts that Alice spin on it that he's the genuine American girl. I think that's great. One weird sort of thing with the song, it has, and uh, Kelly, I, I know you're familiar with their work as well, so I want to see if you agree with this. Almost it, what I have to assume is an intentional callback to the pop era Beach Boys stuff. So I think there's a bunch of interesting tones coursing through. This is not a guitar shred. This is a poppy song. This is definitely a very kind of pop oriented song. So you can get kind of that Beach Boys flavor a little bit to my dismay. The other thing that not necessarily if you take the lyrics, but maybe even if you do take the lyrics into account, this almost feels like this could be on the soundtrack to the musical Hairspray, <laughs> you know, so it was just, <laughs> which you know, that, I was like, that was not something that occurred to me. And I don't know how I feel about that entirely. <laughs> there is this kind of un, unbridled joy and kind of power coming through the song in a very poppy way. And I'm like, so how do I, how do I feel about that? Uh, but yeah, I think, I think I want to go with your Beach Boys reference. I feel better about that, but it is, there's definitely more of a, uh, that kind of, kind of poppy bright sound to it. Yeah, it's definitely, to me, it's a callback to that, the early, I don't want to say like throwaway, because so many people love those songs, but the early, more novelty, poppy Beach Boys era songs. Now, what sprung to mind when I sort of picked up on this reference, and it's fitting, because again, their their drummer contributed quite a bit, well, to most of the entire first disc. So the most recent U2 album had a very similar track on it where they intentionally sort of sonically referenced that classic golden age era Beach Boys sound because they they said that, you know, they were influenced by the Beach Boys and stuff like that. So they wanted to do an homage to that. And to me, that is one of the lowest points of an already weak album from U2. Like that is embarrassingly bad, that song. So... I was very nervous when I started picking up on sort of the Beach Boys thing that was going on with this. Because again, you know, I, I guess Alex likes U2 because their drummer was so heavily involved in disc one. So I was a little bit nervous because that was a song that I really, really tried to like block out of my memory of having heard. And it all came flooding back to me with this. But you got to trust in the Alice Cooper group and... They deliver on this song. They, they pull it off. It's a great throwback to that sound without sounding like any specific Beach Boy song. It's not like a ripoff or a knockoff of some Beach Boy song. It's just a throwback to that sort of old school harmony, rock and roll, pop sound. And they pull it off excellently, as you would expect. It's not the kind of driving rock and roll that we want necessarily from now Cooper Group song, but it's still a good song and I still enjoy it. And... I think, again, Ed, and I kind of mentioned this on our first first conversation with the song Rats, that you had, had the Alice Cooper group stayed together, a song like Rats would be something I would totally expect and would fit in to a, a subsequent Alice Cooper group release. I think this, you know, if you think about things like Billion Dollar Babies, where you go to a song like Marianne, or Sunrise on Love It to Death, where you get something that's just like a complete disconnect from the Detroit rock and all that. This fits the bill for that clearly, <laughs> you know, that it's a jump from there. But this, to me, totally by had the Alice Cooper group remain a going concern that we would have heard Genuine American Girl at some point in time on one of their releases. Yes, and the Neil Smith song, I believe, from Love It to Death, and somebody Wikipedia checked me on this, I think it's Hell It Be My Name. Which I love. That's a good song. I and I love that song, and it is a little different than the other stuff on the record. So again, this is something that would have came from the Alice Cooper group at some point, and especially from Neil Smith, because I feel like he, when he contributes to the writing, he brings a little bit of a different vibe to it, and that's what you get with this. It's a fun song. I like it. Ready to move to you and all your friends? Yes, sir. So 
I got spoiled on this song a little bit, and I hate it when the, when this happens. When uh, I read a little bit of a, a snippet of a review, and they make an assessment, and I think if folks have listened to have heard, have heard a habit of mine is that if I think the song is reminiscent of another group or not necessarily derivative, but at least in the same kind of sound space, I'll, I'll call that out uh, as something that I kind of noticed. And someone who had done a, a review of, of this album referred to this as a uh, Who-esque in kind of the spirit of the Who, who I'm a big fan of as well. And so I kind of, I didn't really want that stuck in my head as I heard it for the first time to see if I'd end up in the same place. I guess I can see that point because it is a little bit of that power trio kind of sound to a lot of this song. This one is decidedly un-Beach Boys-like. Starting off the lyric, we're burning down your city. So it's, you know, you're pretty much off Beach Boy territory at this point pretty quickly. It's a driving song. It builds. It's got a strong chorus to it. it it's a rocker. And again, a song that had the group remain a going concern, I absolutely see this perfectly fitting into one of their releases. Found it to be another very enjoyable song. Both of these, I'm trying to kind of think about how, how they kind of fit and compare to the first disc and how would, how would they fare sitting in there. I think this one would definitely hold its own. And Genuine American Girl, just from a from a quirkiness standpoint, could too. But this this is a solid outing and very, very enjoyable to me. Yeah, I really like this song too. And I didn't come to the Who thing on my own, but hearing it said, I it's definitely an apt description of this track. You can get you can get some of that vibe. And certainly the the Who was known for their we're gonna you were gonna get some punch with their stuff. It was always a super strong rock and roll from the Who. And so those are the two. Now we had we had two Dennis Dunaway songs in the main first albums of Fireball and The Sound of A. For those of you who are recalling back, Sound of A was actually the first song Alice ever wrote, correct, Mike? Yeah, it was the first song that he actually contributed to the writing of, and the song itself dates back to the group's early psychedelic days. We had, you know, you had ample or- original Alice Cooper group influence on a lot of paranormal including the whole band performing on Rats as well, which is a fun number from the first album. We've been waiting a long time for these guys to get back together. There was, you know, the contributions in uh, Welcome to My Nightmare 2 uh, of the band, and those were good. I think these are better. They're definitely very strong. I, I would I would have to go back and specifically just listen to those tracks to compare and contrast them to each other, but least as good, if not better. Runaway Train, I know, was a D- Dennis Dunaway one from at least one of the Dennis Dunaway contributions on Welcome to Nightmare 2, which is a, so- it's a solid song, and it does its job in the narrative uh, pretty importantly. A lot of kind of the marketing of this album was about the fact that you were getting the original Alice Cooper group back together, and if you kind of wonder... How's that going to go? And for me, it went really well. Two very different songs, but two very enjoyable songs. I really love them both. I just hope, you know, is it, it was a little bit of a gap of a few years between Welcome to My Nightmare, which was like, what, 2011, 2012, something like that? Yeah. So we had a little bit of a gap. And now with these songs, though, and we had for Record Store Day, there was a seven inch of live tracks from them. Now we have these songs. Now we have the mini tour. I just really hope that this is the start of something more from the Alice Cooper group. I would love, and my biggest disappointment we're about to get into on this album, and it's not even a disappointment really, it's just I really thought all of Disc 2 was going to be, even if it was only two new studio songs and then live tracks, was going to be the Alice Cooper group. And that's not what we get. And I'm not, again, it's a minor quibble because I really like Alice's live band, and unfortunately they didn't contribute a whole lot to Paranormal. So this is their you know chance to really get in on the fun on this record so that's cool too but i just want more alice cooper group so this is really for me set me up for something that i really hope they deliver on with more material it is a a disappointment because we went into it thinking oh the live set's going to be the original you really have a whole second disc of original alice cooper group so that that came as a bit of a surprise Uh, the, the consolation is it does incorporate a group of outstanding musicians into this album because alice cooper's current group is a bunch of great people and uh, very talented. Nice for them to be a part of it in, the, in that respect, particularly since they were surprisingly not present on the on the first disc. Yeah, it is nice to have them a part of it. It is a little bit of a letdown that it's not the Alice Cooper group. But again, though, the, 
the silver lining of it is since they weren't present on the first disc, we do get some of them and they're excellent musicians. So it's cool to have them a part of this project. So what were your thoughts on the, do you want to go track by track through the live tracks or talk about it as a whole? I think we'll, I think we'll talk about it more, more as a whole. And so let me start off with clearly the biggest and most important victory of it all is Generation Landslide is not present because it would be the 400th recording of Generation Landslide on uh, well, We my, did get what Alice referred to as Generation Landslide 2 on disc one. Which I am perfectly okay with because I would that that's moving the ball forward. But I think we've we've heard enough of Generation Landslide. Good song. Love the song. It's great. And it's great to have Absolutely, yeah. phase two, but uh, it has been so present in many of the of the live stuff that it was nice not to have that in here uh, this time. But it's a pretty a pretty safe selection here because so the the live tracks and this is recorded in Columbus, Ohio, is No More Mr. Nice Guy, Under My Wheels, Billion Dollar Babies, Feed My Frankenstein, Only Women Bleed, and School's Out. So we've got kind of multiple original Alice Cooper group songs and then a couple of the solo pieces as well. I might note that two of the songs on the live album are off of Billion Dollar Babies. Of course, the track that's on Love It to Death is, oh, there is no track from Love It to Death on the live section. Just thought I'd point that out. No reason in particular. Just think maybe if there was like the best. Well, album. no, I think it's good that they're they're giving they're giving a little bit more of attention to their second best album, so that it's not totally forgotten in the wake of Love It to Death. That that's a point of view, or it might be to say I'm bringing out the big guns. So I've got some mixed emotions about. It. So Al Cooper Group Live is always great to listen to, but in all candor, we've heard them better on other other live albums than this. In particular, the 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 two quibbles I have is that no more Mr. Nice Guy. Uh, the the miking that they're doing, so if you're at an Alice Cooper show and no more Mr. Nice Guy comes up, Alice doesn't really bother to sing the lyrics because, the, the chorus rather, because the crowd's singing it. So he just basically points the mic out to the crowd and they're singing the no more Mr. Nice Guy, no more Mr. Clean. And uh, and it's a, if you're in the crowd, it's a great sensation and it's loud and it's good. But however this was mic when you get to basically what would be the crowd participation part of it, it's muddled, it's soft, and it just it's not it's not a good recording for me when they the, the chorus parts of it where it's really intended to to demonstrate the crowd. And there's just so many other instances when, you know, there's the the video, if you've ever seen the video of Alice with the Foo Fighters where he comes out and sings and the crowd singing along with it, you don't have a single problem hearing the power of that crowd singing it. You go back to like Queen Live Killers, that album, they do a lot of stuff where the crowd sings along with them. You don't have a problem hearing them on this one. And I absolutely know the crowd was singing along and singing loud. You have a hard time hearing the the chorus of No More Mr. Nice Guy from the crowd. And that just kind of bothered me a little bit. Did you pick up on that? Uh, yeah, I did. And like you said, this isn't, while it's not bad, this isn't the strongest representation of Alice Live recordings that we've ever had. If I, I don't have the physical packaging in front of me, but this is all sourced from a single show, correct? Right. Columbus, Ohio on May 6, 2016. So here's one of the things that I think we're going to, we're going to get into at great length, not only when we talk about the other Alice Live records, but when we talk about live records in general, because we have talked about doing a show where, because we're, again, kind of spun off of the Alice thing, because we're such fans of live records as a whole, and particularly Alice's live records, we've discussed maybe doing a show of some of our other favorite live records. One of the things that we've talked about in conjunction is the idea of do we like live records when they're better, when they're pieced together from an entire tour or multiple tours or sourced from a single show? I get the benefits of both. In the past, I know a lot of the Alice live records were pieced together for multiple shows, even the ones like... Um, Fistful of Alice, which is our favorite, I believe is from like two nights at the same venue, and they pieced it together from that. Also, you get into the idea of overdubbing, where they'll go back and touch up little parts of things that maybe weren't perfect, whether it's them re-recording it or just using tiny little snippets of audio from a different show over that, where that part was maybe a little bit better. And this might be one of those instances where maybe should it have been sourced for multiple shows or should there have been just a little bit of audio cleanup after the fact? Yeah. And no more Mr. Nice Guy would have greatly benefited from that because it's just it's not an accurate reflection of what goes on during that song. The un Their execution on Under My Wheels, again, the, the band, I mean, everything here is played fantastic. And Under My Wheels, I just continue to 
gain more and more appreciation about what a fantastic song that is. That one went really well. I thought that played well. Billion Dollar Babies also did uh, pretty well. Then my next quote. Under my under my wheels, I think we're both on the same page. It is just one of the best Alice songs overall. I'm I'm sure it's definitely, if not guaranteed, spot a contender for both of our playlists. And and Billion Dollar Babies, you can't go wrong with. It's a classic song. And done the second best Alice Cooper record on one list. (laughs) And then um, Feed My Frankenstein. This has been one. You know, and I think I've mentioned this on past shows that I originally felt was Alice Alice's second best Frankenstein song, <laughs> that Teenage Frankenstein off of Constrictor. I'm a big fan of. I really enjoy the the silliness that is Teenage Frankenstein. For quite a while, uh, this one had the second spot, but the more I heard it live, it grew on me quite a bit, and so I've I've really started to uh, enjoy Free My Frankenstein more. Uh, it's super fun to see in concert, particularly what they do lately is Alice gets kind of put into a chamber, some smoke occurs, and then all of a sudden this big 16 foot tall Alice Cooper Frankenstein thing comes out and is basically singing the lyrics at the at the end of Feed My Frankenstein, which is exactly what happens in this song. And that's kind of my other minor quibble that if you're watching this concert, it makes perfect sense. But if you're just listening to this, you get Alice going, Igor, and then you hear stuff, and then the, the guitars play for a while, and then the last set of lyrics come in, and it's you can tell that the, the chorus, uh, you know, the Feed My Frankenstein is being sung a lot deeper and growlier and seems distant, and that's because it's, you know, in theory coming out from this big monster that's on the stage. And it makes all makes perfect sense when you're seeing it, but if you're listening to it and don't have that frame of reference, I don't know if it's as good an execution as a straight playing or Feed My Frankenstein. Yeah, I'm completely with you on the song itself. Feed My Frankenstein, while I always liked it, wasn't a favorite of mine until I heard it on live records and saw it performed live. Really jumped high on the list for me from that point forward, especially, again, we've mentioned this album so many times, especially on Fistful of Alice, because you get it with Rob Zombie. It's just such a great performance of the song. I know exactly what you're talking about with uh, with the live performance and how that affects the audio recording when it doesn't have the visual component. And again, for me, that goes back to maybe this needed some a little bit of editing after the fact to take that part out and to make it more of a, a cohesive song or maybe pull audio from a different performance where they just stuck to the straight song and didn't have as much theatrics with it. I think I think I would have made it a little bit better. Only Women Bleed, it's very solid performance on that. No no arguments with their great song. And then School's Out, as the many different times, that's always a fun song. You get the band introductions at the very end of it as well, including and playing the part of Alice Cooper Me, which is always kind of a cool little thing. But, and I believe I mentioned this on the last show, but Alice Fibs, because when he's going to introduce Tommy, He's going to tell the people they're in Columbus, Georgia, and he's going to tell the people from Columbus or Columbus, Ohio. He's going to tell the people from Columbus, Ohio, Tommy, but every city that Alice is in, Tommy's from that city. (laughs) And so, so don't, don't believe the hype, but still it's, uh, it schools out. It's fun. It's recorded really well. So enjoyable. I do think, I think we both point out that that these songs or an execution of live have likely been done better on a dedicated live album before. But this does get us to the, other, the the rest of the group, so that's kind of cool. They're good songs. It's nice to have Feed My Frankenstein. My question to you, Mike, is I probably, because a lot of these songs have been done live before, and there's there's plenty of versions of Under My Wheels, uh, Billion Dollar Babies, etc. Is there any song you would have liked to have maybe seen in this mix instead that maybe would have made this as even a stronger live finish to this, this album? Yeah, anything from the later era Alice Cooper Group records. Like the, this is this is a straight play it safe hit set. It's a little bit of a disappointment in the sense that it wasn't the Alice Cooper group as we initially thought. It is cool that the current band got to contribute something to this album, and it is again this is a bonus disc. So essentially, this is added value to the album. So when you take it as that, it's excellent to have six live tracks, even if they're not the greatest live tracks. Just as added value to something, and at a time when you know, as incentive to actually purchase a physical copy or something like that to get the second full disc, or even for the di- added value for the digital and for the streaming, that's awesome and that's great. It really does add a lot of genuine value to it, even if it isn't the best live recording of the band. I get that you're going to have to have some hits on there. It would have been really cool to get some later era. Uh, Alice songs on there, maybe something off Brutal Planet or Dragon Town, or I think the criminally underrated Along Came a Spider. Yeah, Vengeance is Mine would have been 
wonderful to have on here from Dirty Diamonds, A Woman of Mass Distraction, which is another song that goes to another level live. I think could have been super cool to have on here. Brutal Planet itself, the song would have been good. So, you know, maybe Spice Kids, because this is a this is a pretty safe list. This is, hey, you know all these songs. You've This one was in Wayne's World, and these were big hits and all that kind of right. kind Well, of stuff. and that's the thing, too, like, because you can go to those set list sites. So if you took that date and went to the set list, I'm sure they played like 25 songs that night. And some of those later era songs were definitely a part of that set. So it's a shame that in choosing six as the bonus content for this, they played it so safe. And I'm hearing for the current tour, so he's doing a kind of a little mini tour now with Deep Purple right now. Uh, he's actually opening the show with Brutal Planet. Which is nice. nice. Yeah, so it would have been neat to kind of because there there is some pretty strong stuff. So yeah, I because I think Vengeance is mine live. It's it's a powerful song on Spider and live. It just goes to eleven. It's excellent. Yeah, absolutely. I I just and again though this is bonus content. This is added value to the album for you. So as that, it's amazing. You're you're basically getting a whole other album worth of material, and that's awesome. So when you look at it that way, it's great. Is it the best representation of the band live? No. Is it the original Alice Cooper group as it was sort of posted initially? No. But it's great that the current band is on there because they're awesome. They're great players. These are all solid performances. It's just not the best live representation of the band. And had they checked, you know, checked with Mike and I respectively, they talked to me, Zorro's Ascent would have been on here because it's much, much needed as a live version. And of course, Mike would have insisted that Homo Sapiens No Baloney was included uh, as a as a big finisher. 15 minute extended version. The jam version of Homo Sapiens No Baloney. Excellent. Well, we did a tease in the last one that we were going to make sure that we did pull out while well, we're not doing the rankings yet. And this will rank be ranked as a single entity when we put it on our list. So we're going to defer that until the time is right when we've gone through all the other albums and come to this in sequence. So we're not going to rank today. But what we will do is pick the Pat Boone song. So the song that we want to uh, align with Pat Boone and you can select from either disc mic I think you had you had mentioned you maybe had some pretty strong thoughts already what it would be. Where would you be going yes. with that Pat Boone song on this? So first off, I would like to throw out there that I feel like you can't pick No More Mr. Nice Guy since Pat Boone actually covered that. I think that's fair. Yeah, So and you really shouldn't, in my opinion, pick any of the live tracks anyway. I think you should limit it to the new songs, but I'm not going to tell you how to, how to choose your song. But I, I do strongly feel No More Mr. Nice Guy can't be chosen since it already happened. Obviously, I, for to me, it's obvious it has to be Holy Water. He would just see it as like a gospel song. I could see him doing it with a full choir. None of the leading the funeral procession undertones to it. And in fact, I could see him going back to the original rap version. Wow, <laughs> that could be painful. Good choice. I can see it. Uh, I do think going to the original rap version would give that extra kind of pain and awfulness there for sure. I'm going to go actually with Genuine American Girl. And because my theory on that is that Pat would have heard it, you know, not listened to it much, but kind of heard it and goes, yeah, that's the song I'm going to do. I like that song. And then when you would actually see him performing it, you would see him get progressively more confused and concerned as he sang the lyrics of the song. But uh, I would go with Genuine American Girl. Excellent. That was that was going to be my backup if Holy Water seemed a little too on the nose. But then once I heard Alice's you know, explanation of the backstory, I was like, no, this would be it because he would probably not bother to look in Alice's backstory for it. And if he did, his only part he would hear is, I could rap this. I don't really want to see Pat in like uh, low, low hanging jeans or, you know, kind of, I, I just don't. I don't. Rapper Pat is a little bit concerning to me, <laughs> but that would be good. So we'll go with Holy Water for Mike and Genuine American Girl for me and on the Pat Boone songs. We'll include that in the in the blog post. And they said rankings will come later. So, so glad this came out. Tremendously enjoy this album. Uh, nice diversity across it. Great to see the original group involved to the degree they were involved. And we get to hear the the existing band as well. So just a big win as far as I'm concerned. Uh, a very, very strong offering by Mr. Cooper. Absolutely. Great album all the way through. I'm really curious to see where it lands on both of our rankings because I'm not going to try and place it in my head with so many more to still fit into their places, but I, I can tell you it's going to go high. It's going to go high for me. And I think there's a, there's a, there's a couple playlist contenders on this um, as well there so is which there, i did not expect to be honest with you that'll be fun to kind of see how that that sorts out it gets up did we so what did we decide in terms of count on the playlist because i've been 
I been operating think the last time we, we did it was like 15. Yeah, that's what I've been operating under is 15, and that sucks <laughs> because we're we're sitting yeah, there. I've been, I've been basically – I pre-filled it with a couple that I know are going to be on there re- regardless, but I basically have been populating it as we go through the album. So, like, okay, is there anything off of uh, Raise Your Fist and Yell that's going to go on my playlist? No, and then I move on to the next album. And so we'll, we'll have to see. But, boy, when you the choices get hard because there's going to be yeah. some amazing stuff that's not – once we get through all the albums, gang, we're we're not done Alicing you because <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna talk live albums. We're gonna have a playlist show, and then something I haven't shared with Mike until just now uh, is another. What I thought would might be kind of fun to do is uh, in a single show uh, rank the album artwork. Oh, I like that too. Very interested in hearing what your opinions are here of the second disc. I uh, hope you had a chance to listen to what we said about the first. We will. Uh, be getting back to, you know, we're putting both of these out because this is kind of timely and we're not kind of following the, the regular publishing cycle of uh, Nurture and Support and Squat Cobber just to get these out. But as we return back to uh, normal times, we'll uh, continue to crank through the rest of the Alice catalog uh, in terms of where we're at on that. As a reminder, the next time, the next release that is out there, we've already reviewed Trash. And so that is going to be uh, released soon. And then shortly thereafter, we'll be releasing our conversation around Hey Stupid. Lots of Alice talk, more coming. We just won't stop. There's nothing you can do to stop us. Sorry. (laughs) We just like talking about it. Absolutely. And you should definitely, if you have a problem with it, jump on Snapchat and let us know. Yeah, we'll we'll be on it real quick. Send us us a snap or whatever it is that hat thing does. Well, awesome. Thanks, Mike. Enjoyed the conversation quite a bit. I refute your attempts to challenge my rankings. And... uh, Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everyone.